Hey guys, Jake from Rankles Aquarium here, and today we're going to be showing off some more of the species that we received from the shipment from Columbia. Last week you got a sneak peek with our unboxing, but today you're going to get a much deeper dive. This is a very unique large-bodied cori called Corydora brevirostis, or the Watroy cori. They have a really high dorsal fin compared to some of the other Corydoras around their size, as well as they're a little more chunky than something like a panda cori or a peppered cori, while staying a similar length. As a wild-caught specimen, these guys are looking really amazing. They're eating most foods that we put in there, and seem to be having no trouble adjusting. The L240 Vampire Pleco is a really unique one. Not only do they have the striking coloration with the dark, dark body and the bright, bright spots, they max out anywhere from 8 to 10 inches, depending on the specimen. They do have a little bit different body shape than some other plecos you may have seen. You notice they're quite cigar shaped and thin, whereas a lot of the other plecos have a much more broad head. These guys are heavily carnivorous, but will nibble on a little bit of vegetation. These are a really nice group of wild discus. This group is about five and a half, maybe six inches in terms of its body size. Discus are a very unique fish and do require some quite specific parameters when it comes to your aquarium. Generally speaking, I recommend at least 90 gallons for discus, though in certain situations they can be kept in a little bit less. Especially the wild caught specimens are going to need extremely clean water, so tank maintenance is going to be religious with these guys. You want to ensure that you're feeding a very high protein food. Many people will feed things like chunks of beef heart. Right now, we're transitioning these guys onto a combination of bloodworms, beef heart flakes, and a few different pellets. Very cool fish. The Epistogramma lineata are a super cool Epistogramma. They get a massive, massive dorsal fin compared to some of the other Epistogramma. This group here, being wild caught, is a little more picky with their foods, but they're slowly transitioning onto pellet and chunked food. I would strongly recommend having this as the only species of Epistogramma in the tank, as they do tend to be outcompeted by others due to the size of their dorsal fin. The twig catfish, or Farloella acus, are a very cool fish that in the last few years has been much more tricky to come by. In the past, they've been very, very popular in the hobby being available nearly all the time from any aquarium. This is actually the first time I've seen these guys available in the last year and a half. A great addition to any aquarium, 20 gallons and up. They're going to be motoring all around the tank for you. The CW51 quarries are a really unique quarry. They're almost like a giant panda quarry is the way I like, I like to describe them. Having that very similar coloration, but a much more beefy broad body than the panda quarries. These guys max out about two and a half, very maximum three inches. They're a great addition to any tank with, in my opinion, a darker substrate. This is just an example of how beautiful fish are right out of the rivers of Columbia. These guys are called Epistogramma species D12. It may sound a little bit funny hearing a number instead of a name when it comes to the name of a fish, but these guys are a really unique one and they were just discovered so they haven't had a chance to be classified yet. As they mature, the males do get beautiful red coloration throughout their fins, and the female's gonna stay a little bit more of a yellow color, but still a gorgeous fish nonetheless. This uniquely sitting fish are called hockey stick pencil fish, or brown pencil fish, or their scientific name, Nanostomus equis. These guys are really unique, as you can see. They sit in the water column at about a 45 degree angle. They are a little micro predator, so feeding small, high protein foods is very important for these guys. Some of my favorites are live baby brine, even frozen adult brine shrimp. They take no problem at all. And this specific group tends to be taking to pellets and flakes quite well. Hypencestrus contradens are another example of a black and white spotted pleco. So these guys are going to stay considerably smaller, maxing out around five, five and a half inches. Once again, they are 
quite high protein when it comes to their food. So aren't going to help you much in terms of the algae eating side of things, but are a striking option as a centerpiece pleco or even just a, an extra touch to the tank. The liar tail checkerboard cichlid or Dicrosis filamentosus are a really neat little fish similar in behavior to something like an epistogramma or a ram. They're a different type of dwarf cichlid that's a great addition to any peaceful community tank. The males do get a pretty considerable lyre tail, whereas the females does stay a little bit more round. They go beautiful red and blue iridescent colors. Gonna be a little bit more of a shy cichlid, which is why I generally recommend having them with more peaceful fish but can occasionally become a little bit aggressive, especially while breeding, which is one thing to keep an eye out for. Cupid cichlids are some of my favorite little cichlids. They max out around four inches and get very similar coloration to something like a Bolivian ram, though much more intense than the typical Bolivian rams you see. This specific group of Cupid cichlids I have in seems to be mixed in with some Geophagus taniopurinus, I believe is how you pronounce it looking very, very similar at this size, will get about 50% larger and a little bit aggressive. That concludes another sneak peek of some of the fish that arrived on our Columbia shipment. While we did receive over 40 species, I wasn't able to show them all between the two videos, but that gives you a reason to come check them out. I really appreciate you watching, and don't forget to subscribe!